Okay, good morning, everyone. Let's make a quick sound test and let's get going. I cannot longer wait. Let's skip on town. Happy Saturday, everybody. So let's get going. This is going to be probably everybody. Good morning, Shore. Good to see you. Charles, good to see you. It's going to be probably, guys, one of the most important class I've really been sharing um, since I started teaching stuff there around 2010, 2008, whatever it was, all right? This is going to be a class that I <laughs> wanted to do for a long time, but unfortunately, it looked that people were not really interested about risk management, which in fact is the most important component of trading. And the mental aspect and the risk management is the most important uh, component. So hopefully, like golf, you know, you will learn a thing or two that will change everything today. I will also share a spreadsheet that I use here. Can you see the spreadsheet? Give me a quick yes now. With matrix, drawdown, and consistency. I will talk about this. So what I use personally, this is a bonus that I'm going to give you today for the attendees. I'm going to give you something that I personally use that has matrix with mental game incorporated and I will explain what it is and how it works and how I work it. It's me, it's mine. You can make it better and share it with the community in terms of the prettiness of Excel. I'm not an Excel guy. There's drawdown uh, uh, that you can track consistency and we'll talk about that okay so again trading is risky trade with money you can afford to lose most importantly trade with uh, 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 prudently and invest prudently you know my my life journey is not a promise to anybody you know, I've been working extremely hard at it. I had a lot of pain, you know, blood and tears along the way. And I've learned a thing or two that I'd like to share with you guys and hopefully make your game a little better and better, you know, uh, because I do enjoy sharing, especially on Saturdays where I don't have to focus on my own trading and the market. It's more relaxed. Okay. Okay. So, couple of quotes from a, a wise man that I met one day. His name was Mark Nicholas, right? First quote, the gain or losses I achieve during my workday are a direct consequence of the self-improvement efforts and that I invest in my daily routine prior to the market commencement. Yeah. So if you want to make it easy, easier, I'll make market open. Okay. We don't need to put a French word here. It's kind of more of a commencement, which is a beginning or opening. It's more like a French word, right? Risk management is a real dialogue that you need to have with yourself in real time. You know, I repeat, this is very important. Risk management is a real dialogue that you need to have with yourself at all time, period. That's it. You know, this is the way that you will improve by being cognizant, right, of the risk management that is in front of you. Okay. Next, losing is hard, but making profit in the market is even harder. To keep and scale in trading and any businesses. Having momentum is the hardest thing to do and to keep at the highest level. Why? There's a little chemical known as dopamine, right? And your dopamine is going to jack your entire body and brain, right? When you have a great day in trading. And most terrible day and, and catastrophic day, and I should really write it there, Right, the, the correlation ship of this is most catas 
catastrophic days in trading come shortly after our great profitable day, come shortly after great profitable day. Well, it's not your fault, right? What's happening here is that the chemicals are jacked. They are jacking your brain. And you have this euphoria. You made $10,000, you made $20,000, whatever it is, right? You are jacked. And there is a true chemical effect in your brain that makes dangerous, that makes you in a dangerous position to trade for a day or two or three after a great trading day. Is everybody clear? I want a yes, no from everybody. We're going to be very hands-on today. We're going to be very interactive. This is a class that I take very seriously, guys. I don't to do this class today for fun. I want you to like, this is, this is the most important aspect of day trading and mental control, right? So you got to be engaged in that class. Are we clear? After a great trading day, because your chemicals are going to be elevated, trading the next day and the next day, two or three days after that, until the chemical rebalance itself become extremely dangerous. Okay? Very, 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 very deep, very important that you write that down in your notes today. You shut your door because hopefully I will be able to throw some game changers and uh, nugget golden tips for you today and tips and tricks that can really retweak a lot of the things. And in my life, I can tell you that me personally as a trader, this has been a, one of the hardest thing to control. Because when you start winning big and you have a winning day big, you feel like, okay, I am in the zone. I am in my, I have, I have it, my game is back. It's, it's my time. It's volatility is exploding and I need to press. That's your chemical talking. That's not risk management professional risk management talking to you. It's your chemicals. So today you are, you really have a choice. You know, after today, you know, a lot of you guys have been with me uh, uh, many years. Uh, most people who are in this room to be, today have been uh, with me many years, right? But you still have to make the commitment, you know, on the left side, you are going to approach trading and swing trading as a gambler right and on the left side or the right side let's say this time because it's my left your right your right your left right you are going to approach it in a professional manner and if you do approach it in a professional manner right then there's two things you must control there and the first one which is the hardest one will be the mental game with the chemicals we just talked about the dopamine the euphoria, right? The rush, right? And the second thing will be the mathematics, right? Which are going to be what? And that's what we're going to discuss today, which is going to be uh, uh, proper sizing, proper risk to reward ratio, right? This is going to be very, very important. Frequency of your trades, right? Your uh, uh, drawdown, control your daily loss control right your uh, 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 stop loss versus the amount at risk versus the size but this time we're not just going to talk about it today we are going to do charts work we are going to look at charts at a particular moment what would have been the stop loss what would have been the target what would have been the return on investment versus the risk to the reward ratio, right? So when you combine the mental game 
plus the mathematical, logical, other than the notional approach. And you don't deviate from the math here because the math are your friends, the chemical dopamines are not your friends. Then you become more into in line and improving your training significantly. Are we clear, everybody? Give me a quick yes now, because this is really the promise of what we need to do today. You know, we need to go to the mental combined with the math, the math with the mental, it's all connected, right? Because here's what happened. The problem with the mental is this, right? And you'll see it in, in trading very, very fast. So, you know, First of all, you need to have this attitude. I love this quote. It's uh, uh, part of a bigger poem from Rudyard Kipling. This is my first poem that my grandfather gave me when I was a kid. I have an original version uh, in a frame, uh, in French, a very nice frame version that uh, I have been carrying with me through my tra travels, through my life. And it is a very, very important one for me. It's a, it's a poem that has helped me go through a lot of tough time as well, right? But the reality is that in trading, you need to meet triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters the same. You need to have a lot of even kill in trading. Does that make sense? If you've traded long enough, your losses should not do anything to you. Are we clear? If you are a true professional, losses mentally should do nothing to you. But here where it comes where you are truly professional, right? So let me add it. The true force don't get bothered with their losses because it's part of the game. It's like cleanish, cleaning your dishes. Yeah? You are cleaning essentially your dishes, right? And you know as a professional the trader that the faster you clean your dirty dishes, the faster you put that garbage in the street, the less it stinks. And the more it will come, give you the opening of an outcome of winning. So the truth will not get bothered with their losses and love and welcome taking one loss very fast. But the true pro also don't get phased by making 50K in a day. And that, my friend, is very hard. And that is very hard. Show me someone in the room today, including me, right? That is going to make $50,000 after having days like this so you come you have an expectation of 10 days one two three four five etc six seven up boom 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 ten and most of your day you're like this minus 100 minus 300 plus 200 and you go like this and you're plus 1000 and suddenly you hit the jackpot plus 50,000 dollars The person who can equally remain calm on a $50,000 day after a month or two months of break even or mediocre results, right? It's very, very hard to find. It's very, 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 very hard to find. And I think also part of it is what we discussed, the chemicals in your body are difficult to control. Does that make sense, everybody? 
it's difficult to control being happy or euphoric on the day you make fifty thousand dollars but you need to be aware of it your mental game in trading is going to start being aware if you are aware of your feelings then you can take my surprise shit that i didn't tell you that i was going to share with you and then you can go back into the first one here right and you can put how you feel for the day and we'll talk about that later on you know how you're feeling your feelings you know okay so so what 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 i've tried to do in my spreadsheets over the years even though it's not a pretty one is having a mental state assessment before the day trade what strategy i'm going to do which is like am i going to do trading futures stocks futures options and stocks if i feel perfect that day if i feel rested and i'll share i'll share some of that with you guys on how we'll look at this later on okay so one thing i'm i'm very passionate about and i think it's part of your risk control is you have to see risk control also like this it's an understanding of the world you know i'm very puzzled of some traders that are not like this you need to understand the world and you need to understand the economical cycle and history but economical cycles right and and history previous historical behavior in the market right now you are going to tell me how is that connected to risk management it starts the risk management process so you start from a world view from an economical cycle perspective and you go down to your daily excel sheet that we'll do later on which has the math and the emotion integrated does that make sense but you have to not lose fact of the micro you know you know it's interesting like here look she comes here and she says look as inflation dropped in 1921 you know that i'm a big fan of looking at the 1919-1929 i did a video two years ago uh, to the 2019-2029 parallel like i'm fascinated by the symmetry of 100 years apart right so apparently i'm not the only one because in november she was a little late compared to me mark nicolas who did it two years ago right but in november she started looking at the parallel do you guys see that yes or no see this was november 2022 she was starting looking at the parallel but if you look deep i have a video somewhere unless i suppress that video as well because i've been suppressing a lot of my video yeah where i did the 1929 comparison with 2029 and i feel it was just before COVID. So here she says, you know, she says, well, the Fed lowered the interest rate by then from 7%, you know, in uh, May 1921 to 4%, which tripped the roaring 20s, right? Now she's saying, if the Feds are not pivoting, so she's looking at the other side, if the Feds are not pivoting, we are setting more like a 1929, where the Feds kept on increasing rates to squelch to squelch financial speculation and then congress did something else right so your risk management work starts at the economic of cycle and the world are we clear give me a quick yes now and then we'll move on i want i want to go from big picture to your charts but big picture first to your charts okay that's how you become a real professional investor and trader it's not just about trading remember most of my personal money and my family money is in long-term investing and it's the, the the view you should have is play the cycle for three years five years six years or warren buffett 
20 years, 30 years, tax-free, tax, tax comp compounded, you know, for most of your money, right? Remember, if you are new to the community, the ideal mix that I use is 10% in day trading. Of all your cash asset available that you use for day trading, 80% for long-term investing. And now you need to break that into swing trading, 5%, 5%, cryptos and swing trading. Are we clear? Now you could reverse that. You could put 5% here, which probably would be a little bit safer, right? 10% here and 5% in crypto. And that could be probably the better mix right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. But at the end of the day, part of your risk management also is to diversify the buckets properly. And I like to diversify my buckets as such because this bucket of day trading and swing trading right there, those 15% is the hardest bucket. You know, when I buy a set or I sell deep out of the money put for income, or for cost reduction, it's easy. It's easy, but it's boring. And because it's boring, a lot of people don't have the patience to wait, like Warren Buffett, 20 years, 30 years. But the easy road to wealth is boring. Because when you do the day trading here on the left and the swing trading on the right, this is your net liquidation value you go above it, you recross it, you, it's the electrocardiogram, you take risks. When you take the 80% long-term investing, and I do my deep out of the money secure push, puts the trifecta income, where I get put income, I get asset for the stocks, and I get again income if I want to for the cover call. That means that I have an asset like a house where I get paid by tenants twice. The tenant pays me to buy the asset, the house, the stock, and pays me again the rent check with the cover call. So I'm getting paid all the time with 80% of my money. All I get, then comes another thing. There's the government ringing on my door saying, hey, we'll give you a dividend. So you have three sources of income, the, the deep out of the money put, secure, by getting what? The asset here? By getting what? A cover call and resistance? By getting what? A surprise dividend. So I'm getting income here, I'm getting income here, I'm getting income here. Wow, all of this is secured by great company with great uh, employees, great technology, great innovation, you know, great products. It's much less risky than put it in cryptos or doing day trading and swing trading. Does that make sense? Yes or no? So your, 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 your risk management that starts right there, the proper diversification of your asset. Because I have known, believe it or not, over the year, people blowing up because they put all their money in day trading. That's, that's, terrible that's sad that's 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 bad it's people who are like yeah it's bad and it, it, it believe me it doesn't feel good i've been done i've been there done that it's not good to blow up account it's not good to have losing days where you look at your account and and the account is almost empty not good anybody has been there send me if you've been trading long enough more than two years then you should be honest enough. Two to five years, everybody comes close to blowing accounts, everybody, you know? But if you don't take responsibility and admit to yourself that you did, but, uh, okay, keep on going, see what I mean? You know? But I am not perfect. I am, uh, you know, do you realize that one of the, Best basketball player, Kobe Bryant, failed 14,000 times, 14,000 plays to make like something ridiculous, you know, 
14,000 plays before he made like 1,800 plays being one of the best in the world. 14,000 plays of losing before he made 1,800 plays to become the best basketball ever player. So, so you know, this took me 20 years, remember? 20, 20, 21, guys. Yeah? It took me 20 something years, you know? SPY has been my friend that year. Uh, and I got lucky, you know, for the year to do this. But here, where it comes that you are being smart, it comes that you are being smart if you take it out. You take it out and you put it in long term investing. And you put it in different investments. I am not against you put it in long term investing. We started power indicators in other companies and other assets. You, you break it down because when something takes 25 years plus to arrive, you need to make sure that you do appreciate when it arrives. Okay, hold on. Let me kiss my wife goodbye. She's in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Okay. Hey, now you know you're alive. You, we are alive. <laughs> so it takes time. And when it happens, you need to be conscientious to reinvest it in long term assets, you know, and start again with a small account. Why? Because if you are so good at what you do, well, I have news for you. Prove yourself you can take that $12,000 account to a $28,000 account, which becomes again 121, which becomes this, and then start again. The, 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 the worst thing you can do in this business, and I have done it once, is to take this to 500K, then you go to a million, and then you blow a million. Are we clear? This is the worst path you can take in this business. It will crush you. You will need mental help. It will take years for you to come back from. It is not a good place to be. And I have been there, by the way, I took that path. So there's one person in this room that can talk about that path as well. Yeah, I took the path of growing and growing and growing and growing and growing the account as much as I can until I blow up the account back to where I started. I think it was 200,000 or whatever. It's, it's a terrible, terrible journey. Are we clear? Community, yes. Your journey needs to be, especially in day trading and swing trading, part of your risk management to bring small accounts big. Start with a, accounts between $5,000 and $30,000 and I promise you, if you know what you're doing, that's all you will ever need in your life. You don't need more than a starting capital of $5,000 in options. And uh, if you do futures though, and you do MESES, I would recommend eight. So you need at least $13,000 to start, right? You know, between MES and their options, right? But everything else should be long-term and you should, Continue building your retirement accounts and your asset for the futures. So those are long-term accounts that I have. You know, I have stuff everywhere, but I wanted to show you also that it's not about the just the day trading that I'm going to discuss with you. Okay, today it's like I said, you take some of those 2021 things that took forever to come, right, and then you go. You know, you have an account here at 50, you have total accounts here of 118, and you buy assets. Stuff that I give you in the class, look, AT&T, Cogbase, you know, uh, Meta, uh, Palantir, uh, Tesla, Verizon, PayPal, whatever, whatever is left here. I had a lot more, but of course. And then part of your risk management is where I am in the tools. So if you look at the calculator here, am I at the top at the resistance where there is 80% chance of a sale? Or am I at the, the bottom where there's a 60% to an 80% chance of a buy? 
And also I look at the economic of cycle, I look at my weekly charts, we'll look at that, and make a decision of if I have to offset delta risk in the portfolio. Well, I've seen the top coming for the past three weeks. I even sent a, a, a message to the uh, uh, iPhone users, even if you are you're not a paying user, you added the text. I posted some stuff on the Discord that were very clear with the investors and shoulders on the VIX. I mean, believe me, I've gone above and beyond for the people who are not even in our private group, right? But the guys who have been in my private group can tell you, and there's uh, some of them here today, most of them will tell you that I've been pounded that we would get a retracement to the 4,000 minimum, right? So when you know it's coming, what do you do? Well, look at what I do. I have set all my longs with 1,000 shares here of the SPXS, which is the triple bearing here. And so what it does essentially is on a day like yesterday, right? When the short, when my long position goes down, this 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 goes down, right? Guess what happened? The entire portfolio of the 50K account goes up. Do you see that right there on the right too? You see it's 483 on the other screenshot. Do you see that? Yes or no? So that's part of risk management. I have long positions, right? I have long positions offset it by a triple berry TF. So I neutralize the energy. You know, I have the SPXS pushing down like this, and I have my long, long-term hold pushing up. So I'm creating a neutral portfolio in which, in which is slightly tilted on the downside, which provides me an extra $483 yesterday, right? But at the same time, look what I do. I'm collecting 6% dividend on Verizon, I think it's something like this, at and close to 6%, 75% dividend. So on top of that, I'm getting my income, my rental checks from those stuff. So question to everybody, is this model portfolio look risky to you? Is doing a portfolio like this, when the market tank, when you have loans with dividends and some SPXS slightly tilted on the downside, risky to you, it's not risky. It's better, you are creating, you are creating essentially your own bond. You are essentially creating your own bond portfolio with no risk or minimum risk because I don't know if AT&T doesn't go out of business. But I have a, I have a, a lot of things where, where it's cool. And then by the way, just FYI, here I have firepower of $118,000. And here you have your income. You can have money market income. You can have a three month CD, six month CD layers. We call that layering income CDs. And guess what? The market goes down, the market goes down, the market goes down. It was at 3,600 to 2,900 on the SPX. Guess what? Bam! I come in, I have this $120,000 to redeploy into assets. Are we clear? So this is almost $200,000 of assets, $179,000 of assets here, right? So you know me, I'm not a big fan showing you uh, all my stuff because we live in a very uh, litigious society and jealous society now, especially the world is tough, man, it's tough. I don't think there's anything great to go and brag about your money right now. You know, if you're a smart person, you should hide it and not show to people, but you guys are my top guys, you know, you come, you know, I do those classes very seldom now, by the way, you know, what do I do? I used to do them every month, two, three years ago. Now I do them every quarter. So if you are lucky this year, you get four classes. That's if you get lucky, if I want to do that, right? So try to absorb the knowledge, you know, Try to absorb some of the stuff that I really do with my own real money, real account, and see what makes sense to you. You know, you know, I'm not opposed. Look here, 
And not all posts have been sub here on the FDIG <coughs> cryptos, the Janus Anderson Global. And not all posts having some funds and mix of baskets and stuff, right? But what I am very, very strict about is, well, am I in the cycle? And do I need protection with the triple bear ETF to offset my portfolio? So let's let's take an example on the board because there's a couple of people that are not in the mastery that might not understand completely, but it's important you understand what's going on here. So let's take a pet. Do you guys see the pet thing? Yes or no? And for the mastery, it's a good recap, a good refresh as well. Okay. So let's take the position. Here are the longs, right? So I was long with Tesla. I'm long uh, Coinbase. I'm long FDIG, Chinese Fund, whatever, right? Et cetera, et cetera. at and Verizon, right? Palantir. So let's say you calculate all of this, and this is going to create, let's say I have 10 shares here, five shares here, 100 shares here, 100 shares here, or 300 here, 50 here, whatever it was, you know, 100 here. Let's say all of this is going to create a directional portfolio long that is benchmarked to the SPY. It's called a beta weighted with the SPY, right? And let's say for every point, the SPY goes up and down, the entire portfolio is beta at a plus 485 delta, meaning that each time, each time, the market goes up and down one point on the SPY. It's called beta weighted, right? And that's what I do, even on the other little one that I showed you from Think or Swim, the $10,000 account for the past two years, three years, the little one. I always like to show you because showing small accounts does what to traders? It inspires you. It inspires you. It gives you confidence. There's a lot of inspiration that comes from seeing small accounts doing well. Because then <clears throat> what I'm trying to uh, uh, involve in you is that it's possible, you can do it, right? I showed you $200,000 account, million dollar account, or like the other educators, you know who I'm talking about. Nobody gives two shit if you make $1.4 million. Nobody. My, 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 my my observation in the last 14 years is nobody cares because nobody can relate that, that you made 1.4 million dollars does that make sense to everybody in this room but when you show a ten thousand dollar account a five thousand dollar account a twenty eight thousand dollar account now you're talking because this is where most people can relate to a small account a real a real small account that grows so when you have that delta correlation at 480 on the left side for your longs here, and you know you are in the bear market, which this is what we have right now, you know, you like it, you don't like it, I don't care, that's the fact, right? Then you go here and you're like, okay, I'm in a bear market. It's part of my stock portfolio management. Bear market means I need to neutralize what? What do you need to neutralize? You have two choices here. One, you sell everything. You sell all your long assets. Two, you do what? You neutralize. You neutralize the long portfolio. With what? SPX, that's the triple ETF. And what you're doing here is you're creating, let's say, negative 400 delta. It depends. If you think we are going to crash, like I'm thinking right now, now I would tell the portfolio a little bit on the downside, 450 delta. No, I want this number and this number to be very close to each other because the SPX is very powerful. So you will notice that sometimes I have 400 Delta from SPXS here and it's 485 here. I'm still making money when it goes down because that SPXS is very powerful. So I want you to keep this correlationship 
If I base PXS on your uh, stock portfolio, very, very close to the Delta long side. Are we clear? Keep the Delta long, short, very close to each other. Do not get crazy. Don't go here, be short a thousand Delta, long, short Delta, very close to each other. You are not trying to make a killing here. You try to make either a little bit of money on the downside and be able to keep your asset and buy more asset and, and make money with your dividend or your short cover call here. Okay. You're not necessarily looking for a killing. Does that make sense? So I'll take a, it's not very pretty, but I'll take the image and you'll have the image that will put in your notes. And by the way, I will have to open some notes later on, not now. Okay. So this is really how you protect and preserve a long portfolio. I don't know any other ways you could go. Well, I suppose you could go instead of SPXS on puts. Uh, I suppose you could do cover uh, uh, credit spreads, which I don't like. So I can only share my favorite one, which is SPXS triple data. Why not a put? Because put puts are cheaper, guys. Because I don't want to deal with time decay. I don't want to deal with uh, uh, time value going down in the auction. I want one for one delta offset. It's easy. I go in my portfolio, like I showed you, and it's done. I don't even have to go do options. I don't even have, because with options, I'm going to forget I have the options. Here, it doesn't matter. It's right down in my stock portfolio anyway. Does that make sense to everybody? I can only share with you what works for me and what's most simple for me. And that is the most simple way, the most effective way to control your long portfolio. Just get the triple bear ETF, offset your delta risk, figure what's your delta long, you know, deltas, offset them, and then offset them gently close to each other, please, okay? This, you can see, those were some positions I had before I started selling some of the long. I had Baba, I got out of Baba, got out of Google, I got out of Amazon, I got out of Apple. Yeah? So you can see, I got out of Intel. I got out and reduced Meta. I got out of Neo. I reduced Palantir. I reduced, I think I got out of uh, Raya. So you see that depending of the support and the resistance on the up on the power of probability power indicator, I readjust and rebalance my portfolio delta. Make sense? Yes or no? Cool. So let's move on. We've done stocks now. So I'm going to start looking for notes. Give me a second. I'm going to see if I can find this notes. I can need notes with my daily routine would be the best because the daily routine going to predict your day. So hold on. you can find that, that'll be awesome. So hold on one second. If you have any questions on the how to control risk management on the, your stock market portfolio, please ask me, but I'm going to refine with some notes here. Just be patient one second. Because we're going to move to the difficult one. We're going to move to the options market and we're going to move to the futures one. And to the, to the risk, risk in general as well. Okay, so we are going to do a very simple thing, my friends. 
but we're going to do a lot of cleanup here. I had the game plan 2023. We're going to do 2023 master risk management. And look, it's going to be very simple. I'm going to delete most of everything. Mini club. This is gone. Uh, mark, market cycle is fine. Uh, I, I really don't want a lot of stuff from the other stuff. Okay. So I keep the retirement stuff. Uh, and everything else I'm going to delete. Look, everything else I'm going. Uh, well, <laughs> hold on. There's something, maybe not everything else. Hold on. Let's go back. But I want to stop my day clean after the retirement part. Okay, this. Or go. This we are going to keep some stuff on the back ratio for your not. If you said me before the parachute will keep and spread a little bit. Back ratio we keep. That's it. Everything else, I don't care. I want to focus on today. Okay. So, whatever our numbers of page we have left, it is what it is. We have 19 pages still. Okay. But we're going to refine that. So, let's go here quickly. We have not discussed that before I, I go put my, my, my stuff. You know, a lot of the trading when we are going to look at my excel sheet here encompasses the daily routine this is an acronym halt for people who've missed it before and being in this room you know the acronym of halt is angry but well, actually it's there but you guys see it it's angry and so hard hungry angry lonely and tired do you see that yes or no everything else i don't care i want you to focus on that so what will happen in the morning is you kind of test like uh, someone in a pilot in a co-pilot of a plane you need to feel yourself and say you know what I had a shitty night of sleep, excuse my French. I didn't sleep well. I had an argument with my wife. I am hungry, angry, didn't have breakfast, right? Whatever it is, you are going to put it here. Are we clear? We can, you call in the morning, you are going to be, okay, I am tired and I am angry. If you are tired and angry on the first tab, then you are going to readjust your strategy to a safer strategy. So let's go. Risky to safer. To me, the riskier strategy will be the options. Then will be futures. Then will be stocks. Are we clear? Give me a quick yes, no. Everything else, I don't care. Follow along with me because you are not going to understand how to use the spreadsheet and that's a, a that's a big important bonus i'm giving you today okay so you got to kind of feel yourself before the market you know are you hungry angry lonely and tired if you have two out of the four you got to go here in the stock you got to say to yourself, I'm going to only trade stocks today. Are we clear? That's it. You are going to only trade stocks and you are going to have small size for your capital. And you are going to do maybe deep out of the money put and 
do some long-term investing. Because the first layer of the management is to do the prep of your emotional state before the market opens and also do the charts. They go hand to hand. If your emotional state is not there, then don't trade the options of Tesla, but trade the stock of Tesla. Or don't trade it. Because there's another one that is even better. Don't trade. Go enjoy the day. One of the hardest things traders are and do is they don't know to stop. They don't know to say, you know what? I am not in a mind frame to trade today. I don't want to trade today. Who has been able to do that? Say me. Who has been able to come as a professional trader and come in the morning and say, hey, I don't feel like this one. I'm tired. I'm angry. I had a crappy night of sleep, argument with my wife. You know, nobody, nobody has had the strength to walk away, walk away for the day. So it's not for me today. And if it's not you, you know, if it's not you, well, I have news for you. 90% of the traders are not able to walk away. So you got part of the risk management process before the day starts, is you have to make the decision, right, Shore? Am I going to enjoy my morning, go in my Pilates class? Am I going to trade stocks? Am I going to trade futures or options? If my well-being is not there, you do not trade options. If you're not, you, your well-being is not there, you only trade stocks or you don't trade. Those are your best two alternatives. Are we clear? That's it. Yeah, that's it. There's no others. You don't trade. Don't trade is the safest option. You don't put yourself at risk, right? Then after you have your halt being assessed, and you have your strategy being assessed, then you need to start monitoring whether it's with the trade of eight risk management tools or not. You need to start monitoring your date. Here's the date. This is the date. Did I take a two to one risk ratio? Okay. Right? And we'll look at this later on because I have a lot of important slides for risk trade and size. How many trades have I done? How many winners? How many losers? What's my win ratio? What's my loss ratio? What's my PNL? What's my state of mind? What did I do right? What I did wrong to make almost $3,000? Did put stops, target, didn't even look at the, didn't even look at the market all day, went on with my business, was extremely enjoyable and effortless. Don't look every tick, be precise, in your support resistance target, you know, and let the automation do its thing, you know. You know, kept on increasing my size, dollar cost averaging, getting bigger and bigger on a big trend day, right? So I put why I succeeded, I put why, what was my emotion, right? Let's take at a, a loss day here, $495, almost $500 loss. So we come back. What did I do? Already, you see, I've done too many trades, 29 trades. 29 trades where I tell you that most of the time, the ideal numbers of trades are between six and 10 tops. It's, it's more six than 10. The lesser, the better. So I have 29 trades. I have 19 losing, nine winning, I'm losing 500 bucks. Look here, I'm going here. Trade just after the report. Did not let the market stabilize till the open. So I kept on trading the pre-market report and I kept on getting punched in the nose. Are you clear? Yes or no? So this is a very simple spreadsheet that we can all improve. I will give it to you. Someone in the room that is more Tech savvy can improve it. Like I would add a colon here, uh, a colon after the AR on the right. Uh, insert. 
well, I would put the AR here. I would put the AR here. Control V. No, how does that work? Control C. Control V. Yeah, I would put, put it more like this. Right? So you have your AR here, and I would have the, your position size here. Are we clear? So that you track that as well. What's your size? So you have the risk ratio on the chart, and then you have the size. You know, what was your biggest size? Like kind of size, size, biggest size, comment on your size. I don't know. Do something about your size, track the size. Okay. And so try to auto discipline yourself because. If I look at trade overweight, uh, a risk management uh, report, it's not going to tell me the size. Do you realize that? Yes or no? It's not going to tell me if today my maximum size was two years, three years, five years. It doesn't tell me that. Unless you, re you print every day the report of your entry and exit, and then put them on your trading journal. And by the way, all of this that I'm giving you here also is a form of a trading journal. After you become a, a, a fairly successful trader, you are good with the power indicators. You are master your probability power indicators, right? And you have just that, that's like a trading journal every time you place a trade. I don't care if it's a stock trade. I don't care if it's a swing trade. I don't care if it's a futures, everything is the same logic here. Are we clear? Yes or no? Okay, then we'll talk about the drawdown, which I don't know how to spell drawdown like a terrorist. Draw down like this, and your consistency uh, matrix things. So we'll, I want you to master this tab, this tab, this tab, and we'll go over that a little later. Right now, I just wanted to talk about this column and this column, which is mindset, mental attitude versus strategy. Is everybody clear? That's what we've just done. That's the most important. We are going to dig into the risk ratio and all of that later on. Right now, I'm dealing here. What's your mindset to your strategy? Okay. So let's move with the PowerPoint. So, I don't even know what is this, but I don't give a fuck. Sorry, excuse my French. Let's go here. All positions are this that we need to think about. What's your entry to your stop loss? What's the volatility environment that we are in? Are you putting too much size on any company because I have re I have news for you. Any company can go to zero and can go to bankruptcy or can be manipulated. I'm very scared when I see a lot of people in the room putting a lot of money on Tesla. Does that make sense? If you look, my Tesla position was five or ten, right? And I have other family accounts and stuff. I have fidelity accounts where I have the most of my money, and I can tell you that I don't have more than 100 shares of Tesla, okay? So I am always afraid when you look at the risk that you put a lot, a lot of stuff, risk of news, risk of the market, and on a position basis, whatever. So The key area we are going to look each time we look at risk are going to do to be this, right? For the amount. The amount at risk of the capital deployed, the position size, okay? Entry and exit before you place the trade is clear on chart. An eye on what's going on with the VIX, the volatility, and the dollar index, the XY. 
at the proper size. Okay? And as you know, or you've been with me before, size, so we are going to define here in our notes the most important stuff. So sorry, you don't want to go back just to the PowerPoint. You know, we are going to go here. Risk will be focused on math, right? Excel sheet, risk reward, win loss ratios, size plus mental gain. Okay, this is key. This is your premise right there. Or everything, right? And most important, the mental game, which pisses me off because it's going to move everything down. The, unfortunately, that should be it. The mental game should be number one. Mental game, how? Assessment. That should be number one. Do we all agree? Yes or no? Your routine pre-market is what will define your success, people. Your routine outside the market hours will define your success in the market hours. And this is very, very powerful what I just said. You know, because it's very true, right? Your routine pre-market will define your success during the market hours. Okay. So like here. Let's talk about risk reward and then we'll talk about position size. The way you look at charts, you need to look every time, and we are going to look at real charts with our tools. Okay. Every time you look at a chart, you have to say, okay, I'm going to take the trade here, let's say. And let's say I'm going to take the long. And let's say on this $1,000 account, I'm going to choose an amount at risk. And by the way, sorry, this is one or at $100. So the amount at risk is a capital of $10,000. So we have a capital of $10,000 here. So people, what is the amount at risk in percentage term here? And everybody tells me, if I want to risk no more than 1% of my account, I'm risking how much? What's my amount at risk? What's my all in the world? Rabbit all. What's the risk? Everybody, come on. Not just my, everybody, be engaged. Yeah. We have one all of risk. One all of risk is $100 on the $10,000 account, right? One all of risk. Right. So I don't know why you put a thousand dollar again. Yeah, I guess you put in a thousand dollar again. That would be a ten percent again. But anyway, the risk is one hundred dollars. For me, it needs to be one percent, half of a percent to two percent maximum at every time. Okay. So capital at risk, ten k amount at risk one percent is one hundred dollars. So, if the risk is one hundred dollars in your chart, it's going to look like this. This is your stop loss here. It goes to nine hundred or whatever nine thousand, whatever. Boom, get stop. And then you have risk ratio that you look. How many times can I do the same amount compared to my risk? So, let's look at a real chart from our tool because it's very important visually that you always do that because I always do that, but my brain has done it for so many years, everybody, that I go very, very fast in my assumptions. So let's, let's say I look at Meta since you know I have crushed 
meta towards the low 90s, mid, mid 90s. So I look at meta here in our own probability power indicator. And I bought meta at 95. So meta went as low as 88, and I bought it at 95 right there on that red dash. So watch this. If you take this tool, there's trading view as a tool here. See? Do you see? Prediction measurement, and you take the long position. And I go from here and I adjust the risk to the bottom, you know, the bottom of the calculator. And now I increase my risk, my profit all the way to the calculator. And I go like this, so you can see it. Do you see? Do you see the risk ratio? The calculator does that, by the way. I just want to show you. I'm risking from 95 to 64, 30 points. So I'm risking about 30 points of risk. But look, look here from 95 to a target of 260 at one point. How many times the risk? This is called one hour of risk. This is my one hour. How many times do I have here on the upside? Do you know? I just told you. This is roughly uh, 270. So 270 minus the 95, you make the calculation, right? 270 minus 95 to the math. Because this is risk management class. This is not a dense class <laughs> that I am trying to do with you today. Equal 175 divided by the O of 30. And that gives me what? How many O of upside do I have? I just gave you the formula. You just have to type it in your calculator. What's my risk to reward ratio? Reward of what? Can people do the math? We have an entry price of 95. We have an exit price of 270. And we have a risk of 30. I just gave you the math. It is the resistance minus the support divided by the one off. And it gives you how many hours of, of upside you have. It's not nine. It's not nine. At least you try, Sharma, but it's not nine. It's not nine. Do the math. 270 resistance minus the support of 95 divided by your one or of 30 equal what? Can I have a calculator there? Everybody should have an answer. And if you are not doing an answer, either you are not engaged or you don't understand, but just try to understand. And by doing the math on your own calculator, you are going to understand risk ratio better. Because look, Sharma got tricked thinking it was nine. It was not nine. It was not nine. It was 5.8, yes. So now we have 5.8 of risk ratio. So let's go back to my calculator, Andy, my Andy here. What would be the number right there? If that was the trade at the top, what would I put? Which number would I put here? But Mike, why do you put six? If it's 5.8, it's 5.8. Stick to the number, no? So here, you can put this. You can put this as either thirty to thirty times five point eight, but I would just keep it at 
a simple formula 5.8. Are we clear? Or oh, 5.8? I don't know. It's not good. It keeps on that. Uh, it's giving me a headache. But 5.8 would be the number. I don't know if there's something going on on the cell here. Keeps on giving me time for some, some, some number. How do you change the format from that time to that? Anyway, you guys will figure on that. But that's where I want the risk ratio, five to eight. Are we clear? Five eight. Okay. So what's the point of this exercise? The point of this exercise is before you enter any trade. Do you think it's a good thing risk management wise? to know, let's recap, your mental state and the risk reward ratio to the trade. The next thing we are going to look at is the size, the formula I gave you. So let's go with the size. You have a capital here in my example of $10,000. You have a stop loss of 30. That's your downside from here to the edge of the calculator, right? Do we all agree? The amount at risk is what, everybody? The maximum amount at risk that we don't want to lose more in any trade is what? What is it? 1%. Now, this is long-term investing. This is long-term investing, okay? I want you to risk no more than 0.5%, and I'll explain why there's a mathematic for that, to 5%. This is long-term investing. Can we be a little bit more aggressive than the 0.5 or 1% from day trading, yes or no? Can we stretch the portfolio a little bit more so we give, we, we are a little more aggressive inside. Yes or no? Aha. Aha, aha. Don't worry about that, Mike. Just focus to what I'm saying. Can we take a little bit more risk on the entire portfolio if it's a long-term investing? It's a very, very important question. Can you be closer to the 5% than to the 0.5%? And if you say yes, as you are saying yes right now to the room, why is that? Why can you take more risk on your long-term portfolio? Why? There's only one answer. Why? Mark said the risk reward is higher, yeah, okay. But it's not the why, really. Greg, ding, ding, Charles, ding, ding. It's because you have all the time in the world to wait 10 years, 20 years, 30 years and have that trade working for you. So you don't want your stop loss to be too close. Is everybody clear? As a matter of fact, to tell you the truth, if the calculator shows 60 support, I would even add a buffer. Maybe I would do 55, and then my stop loss become 40 instead of 30. Does that make sense? So I'm going to scratch that, and I'm going to put stop loss of 40 so that you understand my point. Now we have $10,000. We have a stop loss of 40. And we are going to be a little bit more aggressive on the uh, uh, maximum amount at risk percentage wise. We are going to take the max amount. We are going to take 5%. I want you to calculate the max size. What's the max size that I can take in that position right now? Do you see the steps that you have to go through if you really want to be a professional trader? And those are simple math 
that you can do a simple spreadsheet for? Yes or no? Are we clear? Do you see? It's simple math. You can do the spreadsheet like in two seconds. Someone can refine it. You do here. Yeah. Uh, we can uh, uh, rename this max size formula. Right? For stocks, uh, uh, for options, you'll have to do it a little different because one contract is 100 shares. So that would be stocks. And it's easy. Look, you put stocks, symbol, you put entry, right? Stop loss, amount at risk, percentage wise of the account, right? Probably I should do the first column. What would be the first column? Well, the first column would be the capital. You are going to allocate it capital. So in, in less than 10 minutes, I can probably automate this with a, a, a spreadsheet and you just put the numbers and then it fits the ideal max, not ideal, it's the max size to the scenario, max size. Max size equal what? Amount at risk, this one, divided by what? The stop loss, this one, which is actually, no, it's, hold on. Yes, hold on. That would be equal, amount at risk here, sorry, F4, divided by stop loss here, boom. So look here in my scenario. I have $10,000 accumulated. So let's put numbers like this. Boom. Like this. 10,000. It's uh, Tesla, not Meta. My entry is 95. My stop loss is 40 points. My amount at risk is... Uh, so you could put the percentage, you could say this one equal the capital times the percentage at risk. So maybe we could include another column called the risk factor. And everything will be automated, guys. That's it, boom. Here, risk factor, risk, percentage factor between one, no, 0 0.5 and 5%. So this is in your mind at all time that you don't screw it up. You don't put stupid shit too, too big of a size. You are, you are doing the right thing and boom. So look, the percentage factor is 5%. Uh, so this needs to be converted in percentage right there, boom. It's the percentage. No, I don't know why I say percentage 500, but you, you, got, the, you got the point. You, this needs to be a percentage. Oh, I put 5%. Okay, 5%. Yes, 5%. Okay, and this one equal the capital at risk times this one, the amount at risk, and boom. Now you have your max size. Now you have your max size from the charts equal the stop loss. Right now, sorry, the amount at risk divided by what? The stop loss of 40 points. Bam. I can buy only 12 shares. Does everybody see what we've just done? Yes or no? Look here. We have a chart. The chart tells us the entry is here 95. The stop loss is uh, 65. That's 30 points. I'm doing a buffer of an extra 10 points. So in case it goes a little bit below the calculator because it's long-term investing. My maximum risk factor needs to be between 0.5 and 5%. I take the highest amount 
Now, remind me, why am I taking the highest amount? Why? Everybody, why? Why am I taking the 5% maximum amount? Because we have a lot of time and it's a long-term investing and we have a lot, a lot of time for our things to be proven because look here, look on the replay. If I take the replay, let's let's get out of this risk ratio stupid shit. But, but let's see if we can do it. But look the replay. If I take the replay right there, look what happened. Replay. I bring you out the look. Look what was the. Do you see the percentage of a win? Do you see the percentage of the win on the calculator was ninety six percent. Can everybody see it? Give me a quick yes no. It's very powerful. The stuff guys. It's very very powerful. So it was 96%. If I have 96% in chance, I know that look, if it goes to the bottom at 65 or a little bit below, and by the way, at the time, at the time, the 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 low of the calculator was even higher, 82, not 63. So I want to create a little buffer because you never know if I go to 55. But I know overall that the stats are in my favor in the long term to win and to, to do extremely well on that trade. So I take $40 from my 95 entry, right? I take the maximum stop loss I can take on the $10,000 account, which is 5% right there. So $10,000 account that I would uh, 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 allocate in my long term investing but I want to stay within the parameter of 5% maximum risk of the $10,000, which is $500. And the formula says that the stop loss, the amount of risk divided by the stop loss of 40 points equal the max size. How do you know it works? The math works. Look, if you have 12.5 shares, which you can only have 12 or 13, so you will have to go 12 and be less risky on your position sizing, the 12.5 times the 40 shares, right? The 40 shares, your stop loss here, if you get stop, right? It will equal your maximum $500. Is everybody clear? So if you want to make sure, make sure formula works, you go like this, right? You equal, make sure formula works. Equal what? If you have this 12 shares maximum size equal this maximum shares times the risk that you wanted the maximum stop loss. And that should equal the maximum amount at risk, the 500. Do you see how now? The optimum size is, right? Your maximum size or your optimum size is exactly what I told you. Right? We're clear? Is everybody clear? Let's do another example. Plus I just did the formula on your spreadsheet, which is wonderful. <laughs> now you have everything. You know, I just did it like live in front of you guys. Boom. I'll save it in case. Let's do another example. And now you are going to do the entire work. I want you guys to be hands on. Because if you're not hands on, why are you coming? You know, we, we need to do a lot of work like this. So let's take code base. Let's go on code base. We'll look at our calculator. Right now, there's a 76% chance of success. Let's say I'm going to buy it on the head and shoulder. So you need to look at short formation too. Okay, I'm going to enter it here. There's a shoulder, there's a head, there's a shoulder. So let's say you enter it at 42, 50. Where would be your stop loss, everybody? Where will be your stop loss? Well, this one is a tough one. Probably a little bit below the head. Let's say this. The head thread was 30. So let's say you go around here, the, the, the 20, let's say. So look here. 
And by the way, the stop loss is completely arbitrary to your technique, whether it's the support or resistance, the edges, doesn't matter. But the edges here are too low. Look, they go all the way to 16. So let's say that the head here was 30. Let's say you are going to add, well, let's say, look, let's go all the way to the calculator. Let's go all the way to 17. Let's say you're going to put a stop loss at 17 and you enter 42. Right there on the shoulder, you enter on that shoulder right there. I have already an alert here at that 42, 42. What's the stop loss then? The stop loss is 42 minus 17. What is that for everybody? My God, I cannot breathe. What is this? Twenty-five, Mark. Thanks. So we have a capital account of 10k. We have a stop loss of 25 points. And we are going to risk how much? What's going to be our amount at risk of that play? What's the amount at risk of the capital? I'm going to do 10%. 10% of the capital, let's say. I'm going to go over the 5%. I want you to do the formula. I want everybody to give me the max size. Let's go. You are not using the formula. You are not using the spreadsheet yet. I want you to keep on thinking. You know, we can have chat GPT, open AI, algos, and all of that. If you don't use your brain first, you are not going to be able to use the spreadsheet properly. So let's go. I'm giving you two minutes. I'll be right back. Guys, I don't want just the results. I want the formula. I want. I want to see this from you. The amount of risk, the division, stop loss, equal the size. And I'm going to ask another one to the room. I want the risk to reward ratio to this trend, assuming that the top here is 220. Aha. Uh -huh. Now I'm complicating things. Yes, I complicate things because that's the way you need to think about your risk management. I want the risk to reward ratio and the maximum size. I'll be right back. Does that make sense, everybody? Give me a quick yes now. I want to see that. I want you guys to like to think like, oh man, because I promise you after today, you will never take a trade without thinking about the risk ratio distance from the support to the resistance and 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 having trades. And then I will explain the mathematic uh, behind the risk ratio. If you do not have at least three to one risk ratio, you are going to lose money in this business. I'll be right back. 